Welcome everyone. Hi. Hope everyone's doing well today. Welcome, welcome. I'm Spacey Botswatelli. I'm a gadgeteer bat and a game developer. <coughs> and today we're doing game development. I want to focus most of the stream on pixel art because I feel like I'm lagging behind a little bit and there's some character animations I want to finish for cutscenes in the world of nature. <coughs> oh. <coughs> but to start with, I did want to go over some of the progress that we have made uh, in the nature levels since the last stream. Um, so we'll start with a bit of game dev, because uh, there's some really interesting topics that I want to go over in that regard. Um, but yes, hello everybody! Hi Blake, Dark Moon, Alex, Gospel, Health Sword, Epps, Haas, other Alex. Welcome! Hope everyone's doing well today. I do feel <clears throat> like a pretty big weight has been lifted off my of my shoulders because I finished um, filling out my tax, tax forms yesterday. That's why I didn't stream, because I wanted to spend the day, like, <clears throat> getting tax stuff out of the way. Um, so all that's left in that regard is to print it out. Uh, and then I have an appointment next week with uh, my accountant. But then it'll be all done for the year and I can relax in April. And... <clears throat> Actually, Easter Sunday is on the last day of this month, I think. Which is kind of interesting. It's usually in April. Yeah. You're doing taxes sometime next week yourself? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, my accountant specifically wants um, her clients to get their paperwork in um, before April 1st. So I kind of have to hustle in that regard. <laughs> but it's okay. She's good. Like, that's the reason I haven't switched her, despite, like, moving, like, three hours away from my hometown. So I'm literally going to, like, go on a three-hour road trip just to see my tax accountant. <laughs> but it's fine, because there's a Wegmans down there. You all know how I feel about Wegmans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, I, I like driving. And I have family down there that I haven't seen in a year. So there are multiple reasons to want to, um, just, just, like, deal with it. <laughs> Three hour adulting trip. That 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 is nothing compared, Alex, to um do you remember the time I was talking about how uh I tried to deposit a, a check that I got from our publisher uh in my local bank up here, but they refused uh because the the check was made out to my company and not me, and I only had a personal account with them. So so I had already drawn I, I had already driven an hour at that point. Uh, to get to this bank. So, after that happened and they refused to cast the check, I was like, you know what? You know what? What's another, what's another, what's another two hours of driving on top of that? So I drove two hours west to my very old bank that still has my business account uh, back in my hometown because they have no branches where I live. So I drove all the way there just to deposit the check and then I drove three hours back home. <laughs> Yes, yes, it's a very good thing that I like driving so much because otherwise I would be upset, but it all worked out. It was a nice trip and, and thankfully the weather was was good that day. I don't know if the snow is going to melt by the, by next week, but I hope it does. I hope the weather's nice. I hope it's at least sunny because I would imagine once I go further south um, that like the weather's going to be more like spring-esque down there because I, I do live at a pretty high altitude. Does my car get good gas mileage? It's it's okay. It gets okay gas mileage. Uh, I think that's kind of offset by the fact that I need premium gas. So I have to get the highest octane available, um, which can get pretty pricey. But I don't really drive enough um, to where that is like a financial concern. So that's good at least. Oh, hi Elfie! Uh, hope you're doing well. <laughs> oh yes, discount Easter candy is gonna be is gonna be good. <laughs> and and the funny thing is is that because Easter is so early this year, uh, we're gonna get discount Easter candy a lot earlier than we otherwise would. Yeah, sometimes most of the time I drive for the vibes. Like I cannot wait until springtime comes around um, up here, and the weather's just like perfect for taking a drive through the woods. I like driving down this one like river that's near us and uh, 
it's just it's 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 so peaceful just like sitting there and, and like listening to the to the to the river water. Okay, so um we're getting a bit off track, sorry about that. Let me take a sippy and then we shall proceed. So I believe last dev stream <clears throat> I was working on the world tree. And <clears throat> I had come up with like this this layout which was kind of like a closed circuit where you would have to uh, restore multiple trees. And every time you restore a tree, it advances one season forward. Um, <clears throat> I was not feeling this layout. It was not very fun or memorable. Well, it was still kind of fun, but it wasn't as memorable as, as like some of the World of Space stages. Like World of Space just like like blew me out of the water with how fun, fun those stages were. So I think... <clears throat> I realized at some point that if I was going to do the same thing for the first nature level, uh, I had to have a bigger sense of like spectacle. Um, and the way I accomplished that is by making like a bigger tree and making the the tree like the central like um, feature of the level. And because of that, this is what I came up with. So it's quite a bit bigger. You have kind of a little alcove here that you start in. But then the tree is like the main focus. Uh, disregard the background offset. It has to be that way. It'll look fine when I play the level. But like <clears throat> the tree is the main feature and just the like the feeling of ascending it vertically feels really nice. <coughs> yeah, it, it is the titular world tree. So you have to climb the tree and then instead of multiple um, multiple like time trees, there's just one. Uh, but you have to get to the top first in order for Fauna to plant the sapling at the base of the tree. So once that happens, you kind of like go up here and you can either take this portal or you can fall down with the funny crony scream. <laughs> and you uh, you activate the sapling here and then it advances to summer. And in summer, the route changes because of the fact that like the vines are growing and like the positions of the warp, warp trunks have changed. So in summer, you have to take like a warp trunk um, to the other side of the tree, and this is where you, you like ascend up here. It is possible to still like ascend like this this place right here, um, but it's a bit trickier. Also, um, <clears throat> I liked the Zelda lo-fi beats so much that I decided to keep them for for this stream too. Um, I keep forgetting this person's name, but it's it's um, Zelda and Chill. But like like major props uh, to them for posting like the soundtrack on YouTube, which I'm streaming from there. Um, <laughs> yeah, game chops, exactly, Alex. All right, so um, we shall give this a test run. Um, do I have a way of pausing the music? Um, I could mute it. Okay. Ma -ma. Well, there, let me check my messages. Yeah, apps, that's a good idea that you posted in Discord. I'll go over that once I go over the stuff um, with the stasis mechanic. Uh, why is my audio not um, functioning? Let me double check that. Hmm. You can hear the game? I can't hear the game. Oh, that's why it's streaming through my PS4 controller speakers. <laughs> um Okay, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna restart this just so I can hear now. Um But yeah, I got I got my new PS4 controller in the mail. The 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 plastic on it feels a bit different, and it feels a bit more lightweight than my old one. Um I kinda like it. I'll also, I'll also, like, I'll also use it more often. All right. Also, props to Jeremy for the orchestral music. So, the first gimmick is these waterfalls that physically push you down. And I brought back the Kokoro drones from the Koyori fight. And this is an, a soft introduction to the uh, timed flower platforms. Also, also, uh, we have a new ground attack animation. It's much more fluid. But I'll go over that once we go over the pixel art, too. 
Here's a little hint that you can use stasis um, to slow down the waterfall so it doesn't push you down anymore. And here's where I'll demonstrate like a big change that we made to stasis. Uh, the bubble now follows you. I think in some regards this just fits the flow of the game much better and I feel like like the the reason we originally made the stasis bubble stay in place is for the potential for puzzle solving. Um, but in practice we don't really have a lot of um, opportunities to make stasis puzzles. So we'll just make it follow crony. And that did mean that I had to rework some of the puzzles uh, in, er in the earlier parts of the game with the levers and the chain platforms, uh, which I will demonstrate after this level. Also, I made these sunflowers that shoot petal spikes at you. And I'm gonna get these notes first. <clears throat> but then we can use the crony stack here. And we double jump and then that'll allow us to ascend vertically. <clears throat> You've had issues with your PS4 controller speaker? Huh. <clears throat> well, it's good to know that we figured that out early. Something that I maybe want to do with the frog slimes is that when you destroy them, maybe they could drop behind their, their mushroom hats, and then you could use them as like a one-time spring. And that could provide some opportunity to kind of like do skips in this level. Okay. The nice thing about the more fluid ground attack animation too is that it makes hate using it under haste a lot more readable. <clears throat> yeah, the mushroom hat spring is actually something that maybe we can work on today. It should be pretty simple to set up. You thought you were gonna say hat at first? Oh yeah! <clears throat> Speaking of which, there is something else I've been working on that I can show off once we get to the garden hub. Uh, also, we will we will update um, her air attack and her spin attack uh, to match the ground one soon. But that needs like another two or three weeks before that's ready. <clears throat> I think I think Alex, it would just kind of like float in the air where the where the frog slime was destroyed, uh, and then you can just use it there. So we reach the top of the tree. Fauna uses the crystal to cast her magic spell to plant a sapling. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Also, yes, that's a landmaker reference with that line. <laughs> um, um. Ashley has infected my brain with landmaker quotes. <laughs> the omens are good. No! The platinum structure! I'm not even sure if they're- how I could work the platinum structure line into the dialogue. I'll- I'll, I'll try to think of something, though. <laughs> so, Ashley is, uh, one of my friends who also made this really cool game called Pelicrash that you might have heard of. But she is a big, um... She's, like, a big fan of, like, obscure Japanese, uh, arcade puzzle games. And uh, one of them, one of her favorites is Landmaker, which I have not played yet, but I'd love to play it with her sometime. All right, we time travel. So now we're in summer, and there's a cut scene that shows that we have to go back up to the top of the tree in order to get the golden gear. And I composed this track, but I'm gonna collab um, with Excess at some point to make it a bit longer and polish it up a bit. <clears throat> oh yeah, I forgot. We should spice up the, the crouching animation too at some point. Or the crouch attack animation, I should say. Oh yes, that is true, Alex. Landmaker's soundtrack is where the Mystic Ruins um, chanting sounds were originally used. So here, we use the crony stacks again, and cronies are immune to spikes because they enjoy pain. <laughs> uh, but there are there is a way to ascend um, this this tower without using the crony stacks, but they just make it easier.
Wow. So we can go up here, drop down here, and then we've got the gear. Let's go! Ta-da! Alright, so <clears throat> that is the world tree. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, <clears throat> oh my goodness. Mm. Okay. So, I want to show off some things in the garden hub uh, real quick. Uh, I was working on the interior of Fauna's um, cottage. Which, um, I don't think I had started the interior. Let's put snail in there now that there's, like, food and water in there. I'll just put him here. Kitty cat. Kitty cat. Alright, so... Ah, uh, Vanilla the First! Hello! Welcome! Hope you're doing well. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. <clears throat> I'm doing game dev, and I'm gonna do pixel art. Okay, going to the garden hub. E. <laughs> e. E. Oh, thank you for a care combo. All right, I'll just sit down real quick and then um, do sippy and stretchy. Ah, I can love this song. Um, this was composed by uh, Zerx and Access together. Oh, hi, Ralph. Oh, yes, of course, Ralph is here. Uh, you were the one who did the care combo. Mm. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if I like the, um, the level select portal being above the fountain. I don't think it's obvious enough. <clears throat> so I think if it were to remain above the fountain, it would have to be, like, a bit more obvious. Like, maybe there could be kind of like a shrine that encircles it. All right, skip the cutscene. <clears throat> but now Fauna hangs around after the cutscene, so that's good. <clears throat> yeah, she talks about the jade apples, and this kind of is where the player finds out that the jade apples are like Fauna's doing. to see more chrono gear. Yeah. Yeah, this sapling's dialogue is kind of like a <clears throat> like a nod to the fact that like <laughs> like as soon as Fauna is done streaming, saplings start missing her terribly. Flower. 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 Also, I have re I have touched up the swimming physics. So now you will actually like stay in place in the water. So you can just like swim free freely. Like, you won't sink to the bottom. <clears throat> it used to be that you sunk to the bottom, but I felt like that m didn't really make being underwater interesting enough. <clears throat> but there is a potential challenge with, um, <clears throat> with, like, free movement in the water like this. We will really need to tighten up our underwater sections so that, like, there's no, like, there's no, like, vast empty areas where the player does nothing. <clears throat> Which is going to be a challenge because, like, um... One of the later levels in World of Nature, uh, Depths of Atlantis, takes place entirely underwater. So you, you can just like, you can just basically go anywhere. So we really have to kind of like, like tunnel players in, in that particular layout. <clears throat> okay, nothing over here. I could put something over here eventually. But let's go in the house. So I've got very basic furniture right now, but I really want to like make some more decorations. Maybe we can do that in, in today's stream as well. <clears throat> Just make more d decor to make it like more cottage core esque. Pet the capital. <clears throat> yeah, f I hope you feel better soon, Eslax. Pet kitty. Yeah. And I haven't made it like Starship ID yet where you can sit on the bed, but <clears throat> I will do that um, as well. And here's like a little, like a little shrine, like for Fauna. It keeps like potions and stuff. Just in case she has anyone who's sick and, like, needs to heal them or something. Figured to be a nice attention to detail. Mm. Why is the enter thing upside down? I probably fix that. Whatever. 
But yeah, and I guess after that, all that's left is to, um, something else I want to do is inside the house, I want to add, um, a spot on the wall, um, where the fishing rod is. Crony would be able to interact with it, and then it'd be like a short cutscene where you, where you, like, there's like fanfare and you get the fishing rod and it's all like, like grandiose and everything. <laughs> because Crony herself loves fishing minigames. And then I imagine after you get it, um, you'd get the option to like play a tutorial on how fishing works. I need to be able to fish in this little pond here. Oh, Rodrigo, yes, uh, did you miss that? Um, we can pet the kettle. <laughs> what fish can you catch? I'll have to give us some thought about what the roster of fish would be. I think it would need to be something that makes sense for each location where you can fish. Um, are there any fish VTubers? Oh, yes, Gura is one of them. Uh, I had a, I had a, I had a funny idea that maybe if you, um, if you fished in one of the World of Space levels, you'd have a random chance of catching Kobo on your line. <laughs> She'd be all, all grumpy and upset. Shovel Knight inspired? Yeah, kind of, I guess. I think that would prevent, um... I think that would prevent... Uh, the fishing from being too situational. You chose the best time to be here? Oh, <laughs> I appreciate that, Vanilla. And every hub so far actually has a pedable NPC. The, star the Starship I ID has a pedable Takodachi. And the Eternity Sanctum uh, has a pedable bread dog. Okay. So let us proceed. Uh, where's my music? <clears throat> Alright, so <clears throat> the beach uh, tile set that I was working on a few streams ago, too. Um, I have fleshed that out along with this level's background. Um, and I just played around with putting some gimmicks down, uh, with an emphasis on I'm kind of like, like making this a speedier level. There's no music yet, so I'm just gonna play. Um. Maybe there's probably at least one special catch you can set up in each world that would give a funny cutscene. I think that'd be pretty cool. And, and maybe there could even be like fishing spots in levels, too. Like you can just stand like like stand in one place and fish if you want. Okay, the swingy vine physics, I really love them. <clears throat> Feels nice. And uh, I got boost rings. I figured that would be nice. And also, these are spikes, but they look like dancing crabs. But they behave exactly like spikes. Like you you won't you won't get hurt by them by going into them from the side, only from the top. And, and what's interesting about these spikes is that they are destructible, so you can just swat them away if you don't want to get hurt by the pincers. <laughs> but, but yeah, they're gonna like dance to the beat, and I think it'd be funny if like, if you, if you idle crony, like right next to them, maybe she would like start dancing with them after a while. <laughs> I think a crony will also be a good addition. I don't know why they don't break these. I, I set up everything correctly, but I think it's just because they hit the like the terrain hitbox on them before they actually like do like a hitbox check. So unfortunately that's kind of a problem. <clears throat> All right, and I also did like an ocean background that kind of pans in as you dip into the water. Yeah! <clears throat> I actually like swiped like the water caustic animation from Freedom Planet 2, but it looks so different because of the game's lower resolution and I shr shrunk it down. But yeah, I love it. And here's kind of the problem I was talking about, the challenge, where, like, there's so much open space, so we really have to tunnel players into a specific route in order to make underwater sections interesting. Uh, we can also drill dash like this. I don't know if I like that. I think I want a more immediate, like, dash move when you're underwater. Would you be able to solve that just by extending the hitbox further in the front? I could, but then, like, colliding with enemies would, would look weird. Um, I did try that, though, and that's literally the only thing that worked. Oh, Porsche Wolfie! Hi! Hope you're doing well! Huh. Okay, so yeah, <clears throat> the underwater section needs some work. It needs some more gimmicks to be, like, actually interesting to swim around in. 
And I do think that having a bespoke dash move underwater that is more immediate and fast um, would really help. All right, so <clears throat> that is that level so far. Uh, also, I made progress on Depths of Atlantis. Um, <clears throat> so like the concept of this level is that we are exploring the ruins of Atlantis and um, <clears throat> It's kind of a desolate place that is still under construction, so you can find like construction parts down here too. Uh, they are part of a tile set, I just haven't used them yet. Uh, I could place some down just so we can see what it looks like. This tile set's so big that I had to split it into three separate sheets. And like, like I, I, I expressed that concern that I'd drive about the scope creep with these backgrounds, uh, with these tile sets, and he agreed, so. Uh, we're gonna dial it down um, in the future, but like Atlantis, it's a good thing that we have so many tiles for Atlantis because I think we could repurpose the columns for some of the later stages in World of Civilization. Um, basically, like for Civ, I'm imagining we could like color them brown and give them a different shape on top instead of like seashells and stuff. <clears throat> okay, so we've got like these like rusty beams here that we can use. And the funny thing is, is that something we didn't consider is that we have platforms and stuff here, but because the player can swim around freely, why would they use the platforms? So uh, I don't know, like, I almost feel like the swimming should be like Mega Man 8 style, where it basically acts as like an infinite double jump, but you still get pulled down. That might be better off just for the sake of like making like this stuff actually useful. Uh, also, I want to put some <clears throat> some of the normal Atlantis tiles down. Let's put this here. Looking nice. And then uh, let's grab this crane down here. <clears throat> so we kind of have that. That's a good thought. <laughs> Painting sprites in Godot is so satisfying. I know, yeah. I'm so glad that they have like a tile mapping tool like this. That's something that I miss. Like we couldn't do it in Freedom Planet 2 because the terrain um, <clears throat> used like splines. <clears throat> and like, like I do love like the terrain in Freedom Planet 2, the fact that it was like so fluid and stuff, but it didn't really adhere to a tile set. So going back to like a tile based system in a traditional 2D platformer is just something that I that I missed for a long for a long time. So I gl I'm glad I get to do it again. <clears throat> Grood's working on making it even better. That's so I'm so happy to hear that because <clears throat> there are still some limitations that uh, are kind of like challenging to work around. <clears throat> like I'm still bothered by the fact that if I try to duplicate a tile set, like copy it and then paste it into another scene. Um, the original tile set that I copied from uh, just disappears. Like only one copy of a specific tile map can exist at a time. Uh, I hope that's something that is like made like easier to understand in the future. So for now, <clears throat> anytime <clears throat> I have multiple scenes that use the same like tile tiles, uh, I have to like remake like the collision and everything from scratch in order to avoid that issue. But other than that, the tile set system is very easy to use, I agree. <clears throat> and also in this stage, well, at the end of the beach level, there will be a cutscene where this submarine pops up, and inside is Pekora, and uh, in, a, in a few of her Nosagis. So Pekora like, kind of like introduces herself to Crony and like asks for her help getting to Atlantis to find treasure. So because of that, <clears throat> Like one of the main gimmicks in Atlantis is that Pecora follows you in, in her sub and she can act as a platform in certain sections. Uh, she could also maybe act as a, a source of oxygen if we have an oxygen mechanic. That might be pretty neat where like instead of having air bubbles, you just have to stay close to Pecora's sub and then like your oxygen gets replenished that way. <clears throat> yeah, she acts as a platform too. It's She doesn't move yet. <clears throat> But I do like the like I do like the vibes. Mm. All right, 
right, so I'll let us check this out. Um, I'm going to play it. It's loading. <clears throat> I did finish the background, too. <clears throat> I've got some bubbles and some like little like light specks. But I like that animated like like light rays in the background too. So that's cool. Um yeah, again the challenge is that like there's no reason <laughs> to use platforms in this level since you can swim freely. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Hydon. There could be little, like, there could be, like, tiny little tunnels that the sub can't get through and only Crony can. So you'd have to kind of, like, distance yourself from the sub, but by doing that, then you'd be more at risk of drowning. But yeah, I really like how this is turning out so far, and there's not supposed to be underwater life down here. Like, it's supposed to be, like, a desolate environment. So that's why there's no coral or fish or anything. Maybe there could be fish in the background. But something else uh, that I wanted to share is that in the tile set, there are these crystal fountains. Uh, let's offset this. So I think by four is fine. Yeah. So crystal fountains, and normally they look like this. Like when they're restored, they're these are basically like the underwater, the Atlantean equivalent of like the time trees uh, that are in um, the world tree stage. So that's what they look like when they're restored. This is what they look they look like normally, uh, and then this is when the sapling is planted. So Ed Shrive really cooked with that. I really like how it looks, and that's this is basically like. It's not, there's no time travel involved with restoring it. Like, the goal is just to get to this location and restore it. Um, and then that will be the end of that level. Uh, you just hope haste doesn't make you drown faster, too? I don't think so. I think that'd be too unfair. I think stasis could be a way to kind of, like, like slow down your oxygen depletion uh, for those for those long trips. The art team you got for this game is amazing. I know, yeah. I'm so happy to be work working with so many talented people, and <clears throat> I love how we're all just kind of like our art styles are just kind of like evolving with each other because we're like constantly like referring to each other's work. Uh, that's one of the coolest things about working with, with an art team on a game is that when, when everybody starts out, they still kind of ha all have their own style, but as as they spend more time like working together. Um, we are like styles just kind of like blend together in a really cool way. That's just it's just that's just like a testament to like it like it's kind of crazy to think about like the specific people that you choose to bring onto your project will ultimately like ultimately like influence the style the overall style and aesthetic of the game. Um, it's kind of crazy to think about, but like yeah, I'm 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 very happy with the team that we have. Yeah, pixel art do be fun. Exactly. So one more thing I wanted to show off before I um, move on to pixel art for today. Um, is that, uh, let's go to Belltown. Because because of the changes to stasis, the original lever puzzle did, did not does not like work anymore. Like, <clears throat> the original intent was that you'd put the stasis bubble on this lever and then hit it. And then that will cause the platform to move down more slowly. Um, that obviously doesn't work anymore because the stasis bubble follows Crony. So you'd hit it, you'd hit this, and then the bubble would leave the lever, and then the platform would go down at normal speed. So I have <coughs> added um, colliders to, uh, like, you see these blue squares here. Those are like detection zones for the stasis bubble. So now, like. Now, by overlapping um, the platforms themselves with the stasis bub bubble, that will be that. That is also a way to slow them down. I feel like that's something that should have been in since the beginning. Uh, I just didn't think of a good solution to make it work until now. So I have like a script attached to, the, to these squares um, that will that will send a signal to the parent lever 
and that's how they get slowed down. It just makes sense. <laughs> and I've added a few like dummy platforms up here so that like when you're climbing the ladder, the stasis bubble is still overlapping. <laughs> uh, Blake says, what's really nice is thanks to something like Godot, pretty much using nothing but sprites, it allows you to create some cool scenarios like enemies uh, busting through walls to get you. Back then, only something like the Neo Geo was capable of having everything be made of sprites, which allows for fun, destructible environments like in Metal Slug games when entire buildings seamlessly collapse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's also some really cool stuff you can pull off with shader effects in terms of sprites. One example in this game is like the like the like the paper burning effect that is um, that is applied to um, certain enemies, such as the Sentry Hands and Sands of Time, uh, when you destroy them. So it's a uh, it, it, it reminds me of the bosses in Ocarina of Time when you when you kill them. They kind of just like they burn up like paper. So it's that kind of effect. <laughs> yeah, it looks so cool. Well, yeah, yeah, I that's how I retooled Bell Town. Um, and I also went to the Bell Tower and kind of added one of the lever platforms here to replace the ladder. I think it makes it more interesting because number one, when you bring this down after hitting the switch, the pogo cronies could jump on the platform and kind of like follow you up. Uh, number two, the the SSRBs could end up dropping down when you when you drop the platform, so they 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 serve as kind of a nasty surprise. <laughs> it just makes this part a little bit more dynamic. So I'll run through Belltown one more time. Bum, bum, bum. You learned so much about sprites from studying Metal Slug? Oh, I imagine so. I've just... <clears throat> I never played Metal, Metal Slug, but I have studied their sprites so much too, which because they're, they're just so pretty to look at out, out of context. Uh, good old Belltown. Also, Edge Drive is cooking with this tile set. He's gonna add some more tiles and, like, spice up the ones that are already here because this is one of the first levels that, um, I drew tiles for. So I need some TLC. I'm very- I'm very much looking forward to what Edge does with it. Uh, also, I- I do want to start working on the second mission soon, too, where- where we dive into the depths and go to the Belltown library. So he's gonna make some library tiles, too. So, since the stasis bubble follows us, the solution now is to just leave it on. And then go this way. The timing's still a little bit tight, and sometimes it doesn't want to, like, work entirely. But if you're quick, you can get in. But I'll see what I can do about, like, making it a bit tighter. But yeah, with the upside down buildings, I've always loved the look of the underground, so I can't wait to expand on it. Like, you just get this sense that there's like something off about this town, and then we find out why that is in the second mission. I should try out Metal Slug one of these days, too. <laughs> Is it an arcade game? Maybe I could, like, play it on Fightcade with Ashley sometime the next time we do Ashley's Arcade. Okay, nice. It's an arcade game? Sweet. Alright, so here's the, the platform up here instead of having a ladder. So we bring this down. And now these guys can follow you down there, so it's like, oh! It's much more interesting to deal with them in that situation than it is on this just, like, this straight piece of land. Also, yes, uh, Edge is going to, uh, redo the giant bell at the top, too. Which I'm quite looking forward to, because it just kind of, like, looks kind of like scuff right now. Procrastination's hitting you? Oh, we've all been there. Don't worry about it. It's a natural part of, uh... 
It's a natural part of the, the human psyche. Usually the way I try to, usually the way I I, I beat procrastination nowadays um, is just by taking like a like a like an actual break. Like like not just surfing the web on the computer, like actually getting off the computer and just like going for a walk outside if the weather's nice, or just like you know doing a little bit of meditation. And that kind of like like clears my he <clears throat> my head enough to where I can like. Focus more on what I want to do. Also, I should I should pet Bread Dog for those who uh, have enjoyed the, the the cat petting action early in the stream. Is Bread Dog here? No, he's not. Uh, I have to load up a save file. I don't think <clears throat> taking the doggos for a walk. Yeah, I can't wait until the weather is nice enough to do that. We had some really nice weather. Um, like a couple weeks ago, but I still couldn't take them for the walk for a walk because it was still a bit too muddy. Okay, uh, I'll just go here. Meow. Okay, bread dog should be here. Mm. Let's go. <laughs> Pet Papa. Bread dog percent. How fast can you uh, pet the doggo? Probably, probably for a good player, it would only take like 15 minutes. <laughs> ah, Violet, hi. Hope you're doing well. Purple bat, purple bat musician VTuber gang. Purple bat, purple bat girl musician VTuber gang. I should say. Wah. Okay. Um. You're gonna butter up that dog with all the pets? Oh, I see what you did there. <clears throat> yeah. Alright, so... Yeah, like... The change to Stasis is definitely an improvement. Um... But I'm still wondering if it's still, um... If there still isn't enough incentive to actively use it. I hope this is enough. Um... But like one of the other ideas that I was actually floating around was that we would just like get rid of stasis like almost entirely. Um, but like, OK, so basically like the my other idea was that we would remove the blue mana bar at the top left and basically turn stasis into kind of like a parry effect that like lasts a shorter amount of time, but has like a lingering effect on enemies. Um, <clears throat> basically kind of like more like witch time from Bayonetta. But I don't think the combat in this game is complex enough to warrant a parry mechanic um, of that magnitude. And the other idea I had was that we could make stasis uh, instead of something that the player controls. It could be a passive buff for when you're at full health. So when you're at full health, <clears throat> like an invisible stasis bubble would appear around crony that would like automatically slow down entities. Um, but in practice, I don't think that will feel nice because there are certain situations where you don't want stuff to slow down. So having it be controlled by your health uh, is probably a no-go. And then of course, my third idea, which is the one I ultimately decided to do, was to keep the stasis bubble attached to Crony and have it follow her around instead of being in one spot. So I'm hoping that's enough. I think it'll lead to some interesting situations where it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a soft parry of sorts. Uh, okay, so from here we can proceed to drawing. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm gonna need to load up my draw program. Uh, there we go. So. <clears throat> First off, I wanted to show <clears throat> the differences between the old ground slash animation and the new one. So this is the one that we've been using for like the longest time since pretty much the start of the game. I like it. I think I did a good job. Uh, and then here is the new one. I just like it has, it has so much punch to it. 
and and it even looks better when you're like when you're like slashing at a really high speed like under haste like this is what it looks like when you're slashing under haste like with the old animation and this is with the new animation there <laughs> so i think the key is that like the the reason this is such a, a vast improvement is because there's like like the body actually follows the motion of the slash like you can kind of see how like the body is just like moving a little bit with the swing. Uh, I don't do that in, in my version. Um, see, like, after the slash, the, the body stays the same. It's only the cape and hair that moves. So that, like... <clears throat> the challenge with that is that because of that sudden shift, uh, you have to let the sword line do the talking and kind of, like, imply the motion that Crony took. Um, which is, is, is fine enough. It's fine enough. We could have stuck with this, but I really wanted to, like, polish it up to the quality that some of the other animations were at. So the fact that she's got, like, she's got, like, a wind up here where she's, like, she's got, like, a wind up here where, like, she's, like, mo moving kind of in the direction and, like, her body continues to move in that direction. So the eye kind of, like, fills in the rest. Just having like that single, those single like frames where she's kind of like moving more into the position um, really does a lot. And the same thing with this one. I did, um, I did tweak this animation a little bit after Caro sent it to me. Um, just to kind of like play around with the height a bit so it feels like mo more consistent. But uh, Caro Berry did such an awesome job with this. I'm very, I'm very grateful. So I think this is like the kind of animation that you like you're never gonna get tired of seeing. <clears throat> uh nice Yeah, I love the shine spark too and the sword slashes. I can't wait to see that in the air attack and the air spin attack. Yeah, and this and the cape is so much more swishy. Like you really feel like the, the how fast she swung her sword because of how high the cape flies upwards. Uh, so my version feels more like you'd ask who someone while cutting them, like in a samurai movie. Yeah, it could fit in that context, I think. Um, uh, Ayatin says that the big difference to you is that the new has a frame of blade ref reflection. We hope that it's coordinated with the hitbox and timing, so it's a visual cue too. That would be really cool. I'd have to study some footage of me, like, hitting enemies with the sword to see if the spark actually, like, lines up with when the hitbox becomes active. Because that would be a really, like, a really good visual cue for people who are not, like, familiar with the frame data of her attacks. So yeah, you'd see the spark and you'd know that's the moment where she does damage. I like that. Gonna lurk and play video games? Oh, no problem, Violet. But yeah, me gusta! Alright, so... <clears throat> I want to work on a character that I have been putting off for way too long. Um, there's one NPC that we're kind of missing, and it's Anya. Because um, she's part of a side quest where you kind of have to restore her from her blade form. So I have a bunch of characters that have already been drawn um, to use as a reference point for her. Um, <clears throat> so I'm kind of flip-flopping on which outfit I want to use for her. This is her official Hololive outfit uh, design. And this is the one that she use, uses most often in streams, where she's got like shorter hair and kind of like a steampunk look. This kind of matches like the time theme of the World of Time, but it's also not as iconic uh, as her original. So I was thinking maybe I could compromise uh, just for the sake of making her easier to animate because she's got wild hair. Maybe I could use her default outfit, but give her short hair. At least I'll do that as a starting point, and then later if I decide I want to um, just like add the hair in, it's as easy as adding the twin tails and then the back part, because the front part is basically the same. Yeah, they're both so cute. Anya herself has said that she vastly prefers having short hair because it feels more like her, um, but she will still use her original design for like like for like official stuff, like like uh, you know like concerts and all that. So yeah, I'll use 
I'll start by using this as a reference just for her head, and then when I move down to the body, I will use, like, her normal outfit. Okay. So, uh, let's get started. Uh, I will start by grabbing the color palette. I'm gonna grab it from this one. So I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna clip, like, the base colors. This. That's maybe a bit too uh, similar, actually. I'm gonna make it a bit brighter. I could just get away with those two colors, I think. What other prominent colors do we have? We have gold. Gonna sort out food, be back later? No problem. Hope you have a good food, depth. And let's get the eye colors. She's got like these hollow eyes. <coughs> almost look, al al almost at least. Like she has very, very tiny pupils, but they are there. It suits her because she's the kind of person, she is never scared. She'll play all sorts of horror games and like she's the kind of person who will laugh at, at the scares rather than like actually be afraid. So the hollow eyes kind of fit that. <laughs> She's probably like the bravest like hollow eye member out of them all. Like her and Mume. Uh, the bow kind of has this like very pale green color. And let's grab her blush color, I guess. What else we got? We got, like, a teal color in her clothing. And then this color right here is also in that clothing. Probably not afraid of the FNAF games. Yeah, nah. Okay, this part's... Yeah, let's add another color for there. You remember doing that as some haunted trails? Nice. Let's get a darker color for, like, the gold parts. I think that's a good palette. We'll start with that. Uh, Height-wise, um, how tall is she? What the? Okay, there we go. I imagine she's probably the like Gura's height, so I'll use Gura as like a reference for like how tall she should she should be. There were two others with you because you were a single attendant, and the others were scared, and you were laughing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna stretch, and I'm gonna put my desk in standing mode. Whoopsie! Tracking's going haywire as we go upwards. Yeah, stretch, stretch too hard. <laughs> I should have a bone cracking sound for when my, uh, my, <laughs> my vial goes soft position. The desk sounds like a hungry beast. Oh, uh, sometimes I feel like it is. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oh, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> oh, right. Reserve. Okay, man, yeah, I'm just like responding to something on Discord. It's feed me productivity. What? Why? Why? What is it? Why is it doing this? No! No! Stop it! Why? What? Why would we get what? <clears throat> did I press? Did I activate an option? Oh. There you go. 
Uh, that, that's always scary when I when I activate a setting w with a shortcut key and I can't figure out how to turn it off. But we're good, we're good. So I will like use like the general shape of Gura's head as a base. Okay, so that kind of this. One, two, three. I need a darker color for the skin. Um, let's do this. That's not dark enough. Um, let's try that. Hi, Edge. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we were just gushing once again over your Atlantis stuff, and we're looking forward um, to the new, like, Belltown stuff, too. Your pixel art's always a treat uh, to see. Uh, does she have no, no lipstick? Good, good. I didn't think so. I just wanted to double check. I guess we could just kind of do this. <clears throat> Glad y'all like it. Yeah. I guess we could kind of do that. And we'll use short hair first as a reference point. Uh. So where is that hair color? Okay, so we got square bangs. And this the top part does stay like kind of like bright. We do this. Something like that, I guess. Nice. Just so I don't shift between the positions too much, I will load um, this reference in a different window. I think it'll be smoother this way. Clara! Hi! Hello, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Howligans, howl at ya! Ow! <gasps> welcome, Raiders! Hi! Welcome, welcome. I'm Stacey Bothell Tully. I'm a gadget here, bat, and a game developer. And today I'm doing art stuff. Uh, speaking of which, I should change my art tech, my, uh, our category to art. I'm doing pixel art for our Hololive fan game. There's uh, some character animations I want to finish up for some upcoming cutscenes. <laughs> Generally surprised it didn't sit off your dogs also hauling. I know uh, Paige is taking a nap in the office bed and she didn't move. But yeah, why'd you all play on your stream? So I can kind of do this. Um, I do want to add in the eyes now. So she's kind of got like, what, what color should I use for the eyebrows? I wonder. I guess this color is fine. Maybe this way. And I would like to use pure white. Okay, 
Okay, so these kind of go down here like this. The longest yeah boy ever, but it's facey Allen. <laughs> yeah, I like that dance emote too. A, a lot of grinding for Grand Blue. I've seen a few people play that game. It looks really pretty. Yeah, she's she's got big eyes. But like, she's also kind of like. Yeah. It looks a bit done, done with everything. Uh, something like that. Uh, do I have a darker color for the hair? Uh, I'm not sure if I do in the palette. I do not. do that and then there's kind of like a there's like a yellow strand right here I notice <laughs> Spacey the wear bat or Spacey the is bat because she is a bat Aww. I've taken sippy so this is like the front bang so we need to add draw the back part of the hair now. Kind of like goes up here. Got like a strand that goes like all the way over here. Very nice bob cut. I just noticed like the audio in the background of this song. Like, it used the the sound for teleporting to another shrine in Breath of the Wild. yellow strands. Let's round it up up here. And draw another NPC. It shouldn't be too much longer until we've drawn every NPC that's going to appear in the game. I think there's just a few more that we need to work on. Um, one of them is Ollie. I know that. Um, and then I think Krone and Okayu. Uh, who else? Krone, Okayu, Toa, Ollie, and I think that's it. And then everybody's got at least a base sprite. Okay, I want to add the same, like, hair strand over here. Like this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what program is this? Yeah, this is a sprite. Very good pixel art program. What I like about it is that it just like, it streamlines everything specifically for pixel art. It's not like Photoshop where you have all these other features that you'll never use in pixel art. So it just has exactly what you need uh, for drawing in this style, uh, nothing more. 
Okay, um, where's my reference image? Okay. Still need to... Okay, that looks fine. I think this needs to be a bit taller still. decent um i kind of need to lower like the eyebrow line i think Move this up here yeah i think her face is more readable that way i'm just missing her brow like like eyebrow right there works. I think that'll do compared to other hair. That's kind of got it. Now we can add highlights. lighten this a bit. I might want to bring that up one more pixel. Well, actually, instead of that, I'll bring her face down one pixel. I think that'll give a clearer separation between her eyebrow and eyelash. a bit rounder and I think I need to move the bangs up a little bit over to the left because so I know it's for the other characters like the back eye is two pixels wide pull her outfit reference. Uh, okay, save this. I'm saving it to my hard drive so I can pull up on second screen. Uh, no, don't save in WebP. Why is WebP a thing? I have a, I have a Chrome extension that specifically lets me save WebP as PNG or JPEG instead. Uh, okay. Save as. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Render that so fast and beautifully spacey. You're doing great. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I've got that... Alright, cool. Um, let's start blocking this out. Mm 
Okay, she's got like a like a white bow here. Well, something like that, I guess. It has like stripes, but I can't draw stripes at this size, so I'll just settle for something like that, I guess. She's got these things. Do I usually export my sprites in their default size? Or do I scale them up by a certain percentage? I export at default size and then, like, the game handles the rest in terms of its internal resolution. She's got like frills on the side here too. That might be tricky to capture. That's the best I can do. She's also got kind of a stripe here, I guess. I feel like I'm gonna shift this to the right just to give it some definition. shoulders. Only a little bit though. And then we got poofy sleeves. Very poofy sleeves. Oof. Okay, what kind of color is this? I guess we could go with gold. some kind of gemstone here. Uh. <laughs> okay, so there's a second layer of frills that are like pink underneath this. She's got a third set of frills that are white. Okay. Valuable blueberry! Thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, so many ruffles. I'll make the shadow color of the ruffles be pink, just to make it blend a little better. Wait. 
That's probably fine. Make these extra poofy. And add some highlights. And then you can kind of see her fingers poking through down here. <laughs> so now on the waist we have kind of like a like a bell with like two bows. Them this long for now, like all the way past the bottom of her skirt, but I want to draw the skirt first. I want to make sure it silhouettes nicely, so one way I could probably do that is just like moving this outwards like this. Chimkin Nuggies! Do I still have the Dino Nuggie emote? Hold on, let me check. I do! Yeah. My friend Kyra has Dino Nuggie, em Dino Nuggie emotes. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I mean Kira. I keep uh, mispronouncing your name, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, where's my reference? This kind of like is like this. Ah, Crimson the Fufian. Hi. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing quite well. Thank you for asking. Wish you could share food from here? Yeah, me too. If only. <clears throat> it would solve a lot of problems in the world if we could transfer food, just like we can transfer messages on the internet. I suppose the closest equivalent is just like ordering DoorDash for somebody. Yeah, so we've got like these this really ornate pattern down here. Which I might have to, like, I'll have to, I'll have to fudge the details because otherwise it won't be readable. I feel like this needs to be over a bit. this. Okay. Give me this. Okay. to draw the other arm now.
I suppose we could just like transfer this over. Ah! Okay. here. there, never mind. Oh. Okay, now the Legos. We could probably co copy the shape from another character that has a similar stance. Try shrinking Kyra's legs. Kiara, I mean. I'm just not having a good day with pronouncing <laughs> names that start with K. leg in particular. It looks like she has like one of these things. And it's like a, it's got like a bow. Like right there. I'm not gonna make it as long as in the reference drawing. doesn't have shoes, so that's fine. Okay, so let us bring this over here. Now in the second leg, she doesn't have the thingy up here. We'll just do some quick and dirty skew effect to get this at the angle we want. Add something like that. And for this leg, there is kind of like a bow down here. Okay, frills on the top, uh, then it's bow right here. And then it's like gold frills up here. And then she's got like this cool like pattern that kind of like goes up this way. Yeah, 
that, something like that. Okay, let's do a horizontal flip just to make sure. This should go a little further. E. Very nice. E. E. Okay. She's a bit taller than Gura, but that's fine. I like it. Very good base to start off with. So now she needs oh, yes. a dialogue portrait. <laughs> okay, Dream Anima Animations asks, uh, Sp Hey Spacey, I was wondering if I could ask you a quick question. You're making a Metroidvania that has a similar style to Symphony of the Night, and the sprites are hand-drawn. And you want there to be a lot of detail and expression on the face of the sprites. Uh, how tall should your sprites be? Uh, th th depends on how long you want to be working on the game. Um, like, <laughs> I don't recommend for pixel art games. I don't recommend working um, past a resolution of 640 by 360. Um, that's a pretty good resolution. Uh, in terms of facial detail, I would recommend giving your characters more of like a chibi style proportion. You know, the size is pretty, um, is pretty nice for having like enough like detail in the face for expressions. Um, but something else you could do is if you want to be Symphony of the Night style, you could use um, the sprites in that game as a reference point and then just have like dialogue boxes that have portraits with the expressions you want. That's kind of a way to bypass like needing to to like draw details in the face. And 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 people who play your game will still get it. <clears throat> What's the largest character sprite I made or the largest sprite size that I worked in? I've done some pretty big sprites. Like back when I was still experimenting with the style for Free and Planet 2 sprites before I actually started working on the game, uh, the character sprites were going to be even bigger. Because, like, one of my goals, even way back then, was to kind of give it the fidelity of a 2D fighting game in terms of, like, sprite resolution and the fluidity of, fluidity of the animations, but in a 2D platform game. Uh, but I did end up shrinking the size a little bit because I felt like it was too big. It was getting out of hand. Well, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that Wonder Lab Labyrinth game is a good reference point, too, because that is very, like, Symphony of the Night-esque. But yeah, usually in this outfit, she has, like, longer hair like this. But, uh, I don't know if I want to draw that and, and animate it. I mean, like, it would fit her base outfit more. Maybe. Okay, I'll, ju I'll just think about it. I'll think about it. Um... I, I now want to work on uh, her Dalek portrait. Let's see. Uh, where's my portraits? <sighs> okay. Yeah, the last, one, the last portrait I drew was a disgruntled crony. <laughs> like, this is what she looks like normally. Um, right here. That's default. And this is disgruntled. Well, this is more like, this is more like, it's more of a regretful expression, I guess. That's what I was aiming for. She's kind of like, like, this is the kind of expression she would make if she's like mad at herself. Like she made a stupid mistake or something. But uh, also, um, Bohi, one of our other pixel artists, uh, also drew a few new frames. Um, one for Flair, one for Blue Knights. Uh, I touched up his sprite for um, the crony phone. Uh, just, just to give it a bit of perspective and make like the clock face match um, the crony portraits. Uh, 
the Slayer says there is a faster way to animate characters for a sprite, such as attack swings and whatnot. Um, it depends on what you mean. If you mean like a technique, like on the drawing side of things, or a shortcut in terms of the program itself. Um, because the program itself is built with the timeline in mind, which is at the bottom of the screen here. It makes it super easy to like line up uh, animation frames. Ah, okay. Technique wise, um, yeah, I would just for attack swings, I would uh, look at other other sprites as a reference point, so you can kind of see how um, how they kind of like. At some point in the attack, like when they actually swing the weapon, um, oftentimes you'll have have most like sprite animations actually just like skip forward um, to the part where the character has like just finished swinging. But then they'll have like a like smear frames or um, like a sword line to kind of like imply the motion. Because if you have too many in between frames, then uh, the attack does not have as much impact. Like if you look at like like cronies like sword animation, like like a lot of novices uh, to pixel art uh, or in animation in general um, will actually animate uh, frames between these two to have like her sword like slowly like move like rotate forward and then like swing around back, um, but it loses impact that way. So don't be afraid to just like skip a bunch of frames and just get to the part where the sword is actually swung. Not only will that make your attacks feel like snappier, uh, but it just like makes it feel more impactful. Like you don't want a lot of startup frames unless you're swinging like a sword that is like very heavy. Um, yeah, you can contrast that with, um, I'm gonna pull up the sword swing animation for the Dark Blue Knight. Mm. So this is the, the, the slash animation for Dark Blue Knights that uh, Virg worked on, uh, one of our other artists. Uh, it's a very heavy sword, so we do have more in between frames. Like, but still, it's still not a lot. Like, we have like two. Uh, but, uh, like that. Yeah, so, so because the, the the swing is more frames it has more weight to it and that's just with one extra frame if you go beyond that then it starts to feel like like exponentially heavier but i i, I like how this feels like it, it also gives like the player a little bit more time to react um even with this uh i do something uh in game where i kind of like i hold this frame for like a half a second and I use a particle effect to kind of like generate a spark at the tip of the sword and play a sound effect. So that way there's enough warning for them to get out of the way of the sword swing. Yeah, and exactly, Sprayer's Resource is a very useful place to get reference for pixel art. Yeah, like, I, I've often caught myself um, looking up sprites for our own game on the Sprayer's Resource, <laughs> just as a quick reference. So they, they provide a very valuable service. Yeah, 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 okay. So that is like the contrast between how I deal with different like sword swings. Gosh, I still love what Carol did for this. I can't wait to see like the other attacks get this kind of treatment. Okay, so let's go to portraits. Uh, I'm going to copy over the color palette. So we want to make sure that we have enough colors to work with. Uh, what the dog doing? What the dog doing? She 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 barky, very lowly. She's like, roo, roo. that's the kind of bark she makes when she's still not sure if she wants to bark or not. Oh my gosh, she she did a little yawn. She was like, oh, oh. She used to yawn like that she, when she was a puppy. She used to do that all the time. Hi, pretty girl. You awake? You awake? Hi. 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 Come on, Bobby. Come on, Bobby. Come on. Come on. Who's your puppy? 
on you, baby girl. Oh, static shock. That's okay. She, she's, she's very EP right now. Like, I called to her and all she did, she's still in the office bed, all she did was just like crawl forward and rest her head on the edge of the bed. So that I could pet her. <laughs> Aww. You wanna sit on mommy's lap? Hey baby girl, come on. <laughs> bobby, bobby. Crashing under her chin right now. Oh, she likes it. That's my favorite thing about dogs is that you can pet them anywhere and they're cool with it. They enjoy it no matter where they're being pet. With cats, you have to be more respectful and more like selective. Like usually with cats, you'll have to like, you'll have to put your hand in front of them. And then once, like, they brush your head against it, then you have permission to pet them. Like, you, you, need, per you need perms to pet a cat. <laughs> but thankfully, in most cases, if you do that, then they will gladly accept. It just feel it feels really good when a cat, like, likes you enough that they'll start brushing against you and sitting on your lap. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm very thirsty today. I have taken Zippy. Your cats would demand petting once they see you? Oh, nice. When my grandmother was still alive, um, the last cat that she owned, um, her name was Duchess. She had a really cool like fur color, like, like she was a fluffy cat. She was fluffy and like her fur was reddish brown with like, with like white stripes every now and then. But yeah, Duchess was such a good cat. Like you could just pick her up and carry her anywhere and she would let you. And like, she was basically like a, like, like she had that dog-like sense of like, pet me anywhere and I'll love it. You didn't have to worry about her like, like trying to bite you if she tried to pet her tummy. She loved tummy rubs. But you could, you could just like carry her around and like pet her and, and like put her in your lap, whatever. Yeah, so snuggly grandma cat. That was a huge contrast to her cat before that one. Um, before that one, she had um, like the fluffy Siamese cat um, cats. Um, <clears throat> I think those are Siamese, I can't remember. But they're like the fluffy ones with um, like the dark face, but the, most of their body's gray. Um, that cat's name was Muffin, and she was very picky. You love giving your sister's dog belly rubs? Nice! Okay, so let me see if I can find a character that kind of has the shape, the head shape we're looking for. Well, I guess I could use one of the council members as a reference. Just in terms of, like, size. Hi, uh -oh. Spacey. Ah. Just stopping by to say one thing. Bats. Bats! Thank you for stopping by, Louise, to spread the word of bat. <laughs> okay, so that will be our reference for, like, the head. And we will transfer the color palette, palette over. Oh, what is the darkest color we're using that one? So from here, we can just change the eye shape to what we want. Um, where's the other outfit? 
There we go. Since we're only mostly like seeing her head, I'm using the, the steampunk hairstyle as a reference. I'm Jukario. Thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Oh, I got a message on Discord. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the team and I are, like, talking more about the, the change to stasis and how we could still have, like, stasis puzzles in the game. Um, it's just that, like, the the puzzle elements that you would utilize stasis uh, would have kind of a lingering slowdown effect that still persists even after they leave the stasis bubble. Ah! I'm trying to do this, I guess. She's got kind of like a dark border around the eye normally. Hey y'all, you're new here? Oh, welcome new person. Yeah, I... Most, like most weeks, I will do like a weekly like game dev stream where I work on like my team's Hollow Life fan game. Um, but I also like playing like speedy platform games. You know, like Mega Man and Sonic and also racing games. Let's do this. Oh, do I have? I do not have uh, eyeshadow. Let's use a cooler color for that. Maybe a bit brighter. That's better. Uh, I noticed that she also has, like, like, lashes, like, border her eye like this. Just tiny little specks. up here and then she's got like a eye shine on this side I think yeah no 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 okay this way some of them can even be platforming challenges, like you need to keep your stasis bubble along some gears or ch a chain as you platform. Yeah, yeah. I think the change to stasis where it follows you instead of staying in one spot is like really going to help facilitate like stasis related platforming. Mm, okay, she's got the brows, like the tiny little brows. <clears throat> Which are kind of like... Shit. Okay, something like that. Um, we won't see her ears because the hair covers it. But let's start on the hair. Well, actually, I should, I should bring her eyes with pix a pixel lower. I 
because like she's a shorter character. So like shorter characters, like you can make them like feel like a bit like shorter or like younger. Just by making um, their forehead look bigger. There we go. Do this, I guess. Needs to be taller. Okay. Uh, I think the hair is too dark right now. There we go. I'm just kind of do this and like. A cool technique to kind of make it look more organic is to just like don't make the line like a like a full like solid line all the way through each hairline <laughs> like leave some gaps in there it just makes it like feel more like you know more rough the way that hair usually is don't worry about like making your hair perfectly geometrical or else it's going to look like toy like like let more like more like the character is like wearing a helmet or is like made of plastic or something you want to add some you want to throw some curveballs in there make it a little make it a little rough These chiller streams, these cozier dev streams. I think it's more my wheelhouse than trying to like do the same thing that everybody else is doing on Twitch, just where they're just like playing video games. Although I do enjoy like sharing like my my opinions and experiences with, the, with each game, just like anybody else. But I feel like with my artwork and with my game devving, that's what, what really like separates me from the crowd. And like I have I have friends I watch on Twitch who also kind of have chill art streams. Um, and it's nice to know that they have such a like a such a high viewership despite like just like doing artwork stuff. This goes to show that people like really appreciate art. Also here. Guess we could. Lance Charleston. Hi. Hope you're doing well. You enjoy chill cozy streams? Uh -huh. Need to do more game dev online too. Oh Alex, that would be so awesome to see you do like game dev stuff. Cause like you and Chris have released like r really small like in indie games on itch in the past. That'd be so cool. It it, it it I kind of feel like it would have like this like 
the, pretty much the same appeal as any of the other streams, like when you're just like like doing artwork and just like talking to people. Or when you're playing your favorite games. Um Okay, there's no hard line up here. It should be up here. Something like that. You would agree with me on that? Originally you heard that I was one of the developers of Freedom Planet and you were excited and interested to find out that you were a streamer and find out what you could learn from me and my experiences in the development side of the gaming industry. Oh, yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Like, of course, dev streams are the, the ideal context for asking those kinds of questions. I think I'm being too nitpicky at this part. With the hair. So let me just continue uh, with other things. Oh, well, other parts of the hair, I should say. There we go. Yep, I I am the dev, I suppose, like the producer of both free and plant games. That's the thing with game development, like even though so many games have like such large teams of talented people, um, <clears throat> like the human brain can only like it has a tendency to associate um, like different pieces of media with just a single creator, just in the for the sake of like simplifying things. Um, so, so I get that. So I don't mind like um, being like the face that most people like think of. I'll always try to like mention like like stuff that other team members have done, but like it's pretty much unavoidable that people are gonna associate Free and Planet with me. It's kind of like it's kind of like you like I can't really name like anyone else that has worked on a Hideo Kojima game, for example. And I can't think of anyone else who um, has worked with the Wachowskis on one of their films. So it's just it's just something that happens. You just gotta kind of have to roll with it. Let's add some stray hairs in. Keanu Reeves. He's such a wholesome bean. I love him. I think it's really neat that, like, you know, when, when, when he was helping to show off Cyberpunk 20, 20, 2077, you know, the you're breathtaking thing. Like, it's pretty sweet that, like, the developers of Cyberpunk, like, gave the guy who told him that at the at the convention or whatever. Um, they gave him like a free copy of the game and like a few other goodies. Okay, so... Is it time work for me to reset the video? I think so. Um, hold on a second. I'm gonna get music back. There we go. And this playlist is like two hours long, oh my goodness. Pretty much exactly two hours long. Because we haven't been streaming for, for almost exactly two hours. Where to save my work? I'm liking how this is looking so far. I think that technique for hair, hair is really helping. That's something I want to touch up on Flare as well when I get to that point. Like I hope Bohemian doesn't mind me um, touching up his sprites. Like, I think, I think, like, they're fantastic, like, starting points that, like, really help, like, speed up the process. It might even be, like, a valuable learning experience 
um, for the rest of the team for me to be able to like touch up the sprites that they do. Kind of like how ward sprites have really helped me um, with like my my character silhouettes. Because like originally, originally like for a, for a significant number of these characters, I had originally drawn them and 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 they were like a bit rougher. Uh, and then like Ward came in and kind of like redid the sprites to have like 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 stronger silhouettes. And I learned so much from that, just like studying the way that he did it. Um, to the point where I can make a character like Anya, for example, um, and it it would it, it would feel like she didn't really need any like any like significant touch ups compared to how I used to draw sprites. Uh, good work. Welcome. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Mm, okay, so here uh, we kind of like kind of like like go down like this, and then somewhere around the eye is when we have like the like the bob cut curve. Ah, uh, like your emote quirk. It's 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 so cool. One of the coolest things about Twitch is that the fact that people can use emotes in any channel, and like random people will just pop in and say hi, and then you can see some more cool artwork in the form of their emotes. Uh, uh. Something I really wish YouTube did. Like I've said this before, but I think I'd love to see it, um, YouTube someday. Making it so that, like, whoever is whitelisted to raid your channel will also be able to use their, um, their membership emotes in your channel as well. I think that really go a long way to making, like, certain, like, like, VTuber groups feel a bit more connected. You know, like Hololive, for example. Because they often raid, raid into each other's streams. But I don't suspect YouTube will really do that. Right now, their focus is on becoming more like TikTok, and uh, TikTok's focus is becoming uh, focusing on becoming more like YouTube. <laughs> so it's kind of weird how that works out. Okay, we've got the strand here. Do I have another hair color? Uh, I do not. Yeah, it's okay to be your own thing, TikTok. It's okay to wish to be Vine. Uh, oh. Like, Vine is such a bittersweet story because, like, you, you just know that if the things that they would have had to do in order to, like, survive, they wouldn't have been Vine anymore at that point. Like, it was, it was too good to last. only crime was not uh, being impossible to monetize. Okay, so this part's right down there. Uh, start start having some hair strands in the back. So the same thing's happening to TikTok. 
So I guess TikTok is almost like a what if, like what if Vine actually did what it took to be properly monetized. I guess we will see the end results soon enough. Okay, that part. Uh, I want to make this thicker. Oh yeah, that two-edge drive. <laughs> yeah, their their efforts to monetize might end up being for naught. If that comes to pass. Ah, uh, it just keeps happening. But once again, since they don't pay attention to the past and history repeats itself, they're going to be very rudely surprised that if that comes to pass, that it doesn't solve any problems. if I can get away with copying this over but then just like making it a bit shorter explicitly ban politics on this channel because politics is life. Um, but there are some things that are better left to people who are like more familiar with the subject. Hmm, I think that's everything I need for the hair. hair down. Uh, I feel like I want to add the other gold strand right here. You almost got hired at TikToks as a video editor for the company itself. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah, today is a Friday. Certainly a day for fries if I had any fries to cook. Sadly, it is not the day that crabs fries either. That was March 14th. <laughs> okay, ooh, okay. Yeah, I like this. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did in the Sprite. Uh, and brighten up the top a little bit. 
and then from there. Okay. Uh, let me zoom in in my reference. Did I get the right color? Oh, no, okay, I got it, I got it. here like this. Very popular technique to make hair look and feel more shiny. And I do want to add a bit of a dark spot here to enhance the look of the shininess. now. Oh my goodness. So maybe I could extend that down to the bottom part of the hair too. Just to make it stand out a bit more. Just a little bit of detail from her default outfit into this. Also, how does the size compare to other characters? Yeah, it should be cool. It's just because she doesn't have like her twin tails and her like long hair taking up the rest of the um, the rest of the portrait box. So, like, again, I might add it later at some point if this feels too, like, too much of a deviation, but... For now, we good. Ah! Uh, friendly builds! Thank you for the raid! Welcome, raiders! Hi! I am Spacey Bothletellium, a gadgeteer bat and a game developer. And today I'm doing pixel art for our Hololive fan game. I spent most of the stream working uh, on this particular character, but she's almost done. Oh, oh, Dark Moon, you're gonna wear a Nera cosplay? That's so cool. I can't wait to see how it turns out. So she's got kind of like frills. that go down like a little bit like this. What'd y'all play on your stream, by the way? Plant party! Well, well. Yeah, it's Anya. Anya Melfissa from uh, How Live Indonesia. But 
The way this song started, it made me think it was gonna go into uh, So Happy Together. <laughs> I wonder if Silva Gunner has done a re has done a remix like that, mashed up Juro Valley and So Happy Together. <laughs> I bet it'd sound really dope. You're me is you and everything so happy together. <laughs> so happy together. <laughs> So happy together. I want to hear that now. I'll do it myself if I have to. I'd have to like take the Jiro Valley song though and like slow it down to like this tempo. Otherwise it'll be way too fast. size of the, that the ribbon should be, I think. So then we can kind of like go down like this a little bit and then... single page free implant to manga oh my goodness favorite genres of music um i like a variety of things but like is is video game music a genre i like stuff that's like like very like melody focused like very melodic that stuff that kind of stuff tends to stick in my head longer pretty good. I do get tired of chiptune after a while though. So I prefer stuff that's a bit higher up uh, in the console generations. I feel like chiptune is a style, not so much a genre. True. She's got like a 
<laughs> oh, I guess. Something like that, I guess. Uh, and then she's got like these frills on the side. So many frills. This feels very relaxing with the snow falling outside. But like most people this time of year, my patience for snow is wearing thin. You'll take the snow? I wish you could have my snow. I wish so very much. like an interesting pattern so it goes kind of like it's almost like a lace pattern but it's a bit more like erratic like the gem over here. That's ah, too square, but I'll fix that. getting bonked in chat, people being naughty. I haven't been paying attention, so thank you for paying attention for me, Alex. Okay, that's gonna work a bit better, I think. Make it taper down more into like, in like an A shape. Ah. 
Okay. Something like that, I guess. I don't know, it still looks weird. I think maybe it's too high up. Like it starts too high up. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Now I'm reminded of the Walking Dead meme. <laughs> Where he's like slowly inching towards uh, Carl. And he's just like doing lame like dad jokes. I did, I, I recreated that meme one time, I remember, like with Freedom Planet 1 sprites, and it was Spade um, bothering Carol with lame puns. He was like, hey, did you hear they ran out of Bluebell? <laughs> did you? I, I screamed. I screamed. Yeah, you get it. I screamed, Carol. And then he was like, that's okay. They're restocking on Sunday. Sunday, Carol. You get it? Sunday, because you know, ice cream Sunday. Also, the date Sunday. Mm, okay. I dig this. We have to do the horizontal flip. Ah, okay. I think it's a bit imbalanced. We could probably fix that maybe with a with a skew. Whoops. Okay, <laughs> we'll skew, but only this part. We'll will not will not skew the front arm. There we go. So like this part right here, I believe. This is just like her clothes more. Nice. And I think this goes like this. Princess Peach Showtime released. Uh, it looks like such a charming game, but it also seems like the kind of game where, like, the new powers don't add any kind of, like, depth or complexity. They're just there to serve as, like, keys to open doors. Like, you run into the part that needs, like, the chef power, you switch to the chef power. And then you run into the part that uses the swordsman, needs the swordsman power, and then you switch to that. I have that problem with Shantae games too. 
most of them, like, the, the powers are not, like, really that interchangeable. You just, like, you find the place that needs the, 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 the monkey transformation, and you transform into the, to the monkey for just that part. Or you find the place that needs the mermaid transformation, and you need to use the mermaid transformation and nothing else for that part. Like, I get that it makes, like, the game, like, the gameplay, like, feel like it has more variety, but, I don't know, it just feels superficial to me. Especially coming from a background, um, of, like, playing, like, so many Mega Man games, which tend to do a pretty good job of giving, um, each, like, weapon and power multiple uses. Pirate's Grish was best, though. Monkey transformations used for speedrunner stress. Oh, I can imagine so. But I'm, I'm more, I'm more referring in terms of like what the designer's intent is. Okay. Pretty nice. So the only question mark here is, is I don't know if she feels small compared to the other NPCs. Uh, she's probably fine. She's not meant to be big. And it'll help if I, like, add, like, the long parts of her hair later. But yeah. I dig it. I have 27 NPCs. No, 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 no. This is dialogue portraits. And that's not 27, that's 127. <laughs> 127 dialogue portraits. Like, cause, cause the one's cut off in the in the frame counter, but if you look down here, it is frame one twenty seven. Oh wow, 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 yeah! I can't believe I've like out of hundred out of these one hundred twenty seven, I probably made like like one hundred and five of them. <laughs> but in terms of our actual NPC count, um, I can go based on like how many folders are in the character section. Um, let me check. So in the characters folder, there are 34 folders. So there are currently 34 characters. Um, that's not including Anya, who we just made. Um, so I'm gonna close these. So I will make a folder for Anya, and then it'll be up to 35 characters. And then I think if... If all that's left is, um, if all that's left is Krone, Okayu, Tola, and, um, oh, what's the other one? Well, four more. So there, there'll be around 40, 40 characters. Most of them are, like, minor NPCs. Okay, so I've copied that sprite. I am going to make a new. go. Okay, save as. I'm gonna make a folder for Anya. Da, 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 da. It's not something that my screen captures, because it's like a file select. There we go. So, we are up to 35. Do we have Crony? We do not have Crony right now. Um, I still need to draw her. That's cool. Um, who else is lacking? Let's see, in World of Nature, we need... Oh, right, Pecora doesn't have a portrait yet. I'll draw Pecora's portrait. Pecora is definitely one of the most, um, one of the most famous Hala VTubers. Her and Gura are, like, the most famous, because, like, 
<laughs> Gura has the highest like subscriber count um, of any VTuber uh, on YouTube, and Pecora has consistently placed in like top ten um, most watched female streamers. Yeah, they both have really cute designs, and I like that Pecora's like whole whole sh whole spiel. Her gimmick is that like she likes ex she likes ex explosions, and she's like a huge fan of Metal Gear Metal Gear Solid. So her role in the story kind of like plays into how much she likes to blow stuff up. So let's see, uh, I need to pull up uh, a reference of Picora. Ma, 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 ma. Yeah, I like Picora's design so much. Like when, when Kiryu Koko was still a part of How Alive, she was the most popular. But like Picora was like pretty close. Where are you? Okay. Alright, so... There's Pecora. I think. Nice. But we're only concerned about the top half, because that's all that we'll see in the dialogue portrait. Um... Well, of course, I will keep it on my second screen so I don't have to constantly flip between them. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Uh, her, her bunny ears might get cut off, but that's fine. Operator, hi! Hope you're doing well. I'm getting a Discord message. Nice. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Oh, some, somebody, somebody showed me the proof of concept for that E-102 Gamma fan game. It looks so good. It kind of, it always kind of makes me sad when developers, like, don't feel confident in what they've created. Because at the end of the video, he talks about how um, he's not going to release the files because he's pretty sure somebody else could do a much better job in a shorter amount of time. But come on, give yourself some credit. Like, what he did is, like, honestly more work than so many other game developers put into their projects throughout the entire duration of the project. Yeah. Yeah, a Gamma fan game. He worked on it. Um, I could... We could actually watch that later if you want. Yeah, I'll do Pecora's portrait, and then if we have time later, we'll watch the Gamma video. Okay, so once again, I do want to use another character as a reference point. And here is where I will grab um, the Cora's color palette. So I do want it to match. It's me, Pecora! She has a very distinctive laugh, too. She's, she's like if Bugs Bunny was an anime girl. Unlike Bugs Bunny, um, her managers and owners very much do all they can to help her succeed. Okay. Oh yeah, she has the fighting game combo laugh. That's that's the way it's been described. Seven gifted a tier one sub to Creeper Boy Nine. Thank you for gifting a sub. Four gift subs in the channel. Let's start with her eyes. She has powerful eyes. Hmm. 
I'm gonna not worry about the mouth right now. Uh, guess I could kind of do this. And this. Oh, also I should copy over the skin color. Uh, did I already do that? No, I didn't. She's got like, her brows remind me of my dogs, like the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, they just have the little circles over their eyes. Like she's got like that. <laughs> one of those kind of buffies outdoors yesterday let's go yeah um where my mom works like every now and then uh, they'll they'll people will bring buffies in and every now and then uh someone brings in a cavalier uh cavalier king charles spaniels are such good beans they're like the perfect dog for me everybody's got their ideal like dog breed in terms of like the the temperament that fits your lifestyle the best okay so now what we want to do is we want to like actually draw the eyes they're kind of um, they're kind of oval shaped Now that I look at them, they almost look like they're shaped like eggs. And I do want to darken the top part a bit. Just to give it that nice gradient effect. down like this. Uh, something like that, I guess. And then we add like the, the light spec. over like that. Sure. Dun, dun, dun. to add those brows. darken them here since they're mostly obscured by her hair. Uh, 
And then uh, we add the nose. And the mouth from the mouth, I'll find someone who has like an open mouth. There we go. Is it the same? No, I just want this. I want your mouth. Bunny teeth. Uh -huh. There we go. So let us do the hair now. So she's got like these strands that kind of come down here. forehead that is exposed. So we kind of go down like this. Argo, thank you for care combo. Okay. Mm. Whoops. What the? Oh, I see. Alright, I'll take sipping stretchy. stretch. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> she does have high eyebrows. I should probably raise this a little bit. how everybody in Pecora's generation in this game is like initially antagonistic towards Crony. <laughs> but it leads to some very fun <laughs> dialogue exchanges. Are they antagonistic because Crony's antagonistic towards them beforehand? Um, not really. They're just kind of doing their own thing and they don't want Crony to interfere. But she wants to anyway, because she's trying to fix the timelines. Uh, 
of something like that, I guess. And it kind of like fades into white as we get higher up. Which is a little difficult to capture gradient effects with like a limited color palette like this, but I'll do my best. Oh. Okay, that part, I guess. And then we can kind of like cap it off with some white up here. Nice. And then she's got these these parts of her hair that are like go straight down. bring that over to the other side. That way it's got a friend on the other side. Kind of like looks like it kind of like starts here. like like a separate hair strand She's got like her pigtails, which let's see, what's the best way I can approach this? 
How high are they? Okay, they're like slightly above her eyes, the center point. Kind of like that. And they kind of like go all the way up here. look like it's like scrunched up. So then we start doing like this color. Oh my goodness. Braided hair is not easy to draw. I don't have to draw all of it. <clears throat> Just enough to get us to the edge of the portrait. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Okay, the, now down here, there's one more. Oh, that one might be a bit large. of more braids. all it's left is the other side and then the ears and then the head will be pretty much done aside from polish 
But let's just copy this over. Uh, I'm gonna move this layer up. We'll put this on the layer below. Nice. Okay. Don't need detail here since it's behind everything. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this over. And then we'll start bringing some of this hair over here. Oh, shoot, I have to draw this part again. Okay, so that's like that, and there's a, there's a carrot in this one. Okay, cool. Now let's... Start braiding some more. Okay, that way is like... More carrot. But then it kind of goes like right here and It is difficult. Something like that, I guess. Doing the rest like that's fine. <laughs> okay. Oh, who is this one, Mike? This is uh, Usada Pecora. Uh, it's her. It's the bunny VTuber. She is consistently like one of the most watched like female streamers on YouTube. 
like not just VTubers, like just like in general. Like every single one of her streams that I've seen whenever she's live, like I don't usually watch her. Whenever she's live, like she pulls in like 30,000 viewers at a time, no matter what she's streaming. Yeah, it's so wild. Like, I don't even think Iron Mouse gets those kinds of numbers. And she can, she like ranks in the top 10 most of the time, too. Ah, thank you for care, combo Saturn. Okay, I'll take Sippy and Stretchy. Yeah, like those kinds of numbers are not too uncommon for a Hollow Life VTuber who's having like a special event, like a like a like a birthday celebration or like like a 3D concert or something. But for Pecora, it's a, it's it's just a, it's just another day. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I stretch. So how did I do this? Okay. Oh, I think I got these mixed up. I think this is supposed to be a more over. of the hair braids are flipped on this side. But well, let's draw the ears. So she got tiny little bunny ears. around the top. And then she's got kind of like a puff ball down here. Like a cotton, like a cotton ball. Oh, thank you for adding that. That's ah, so nice. a little bit just to give it a bit more perspective. I think her lashes might be too
something like that. up one pixel. Super nice scarf. down bunny face. what I'm drawing. <laughs> Bunoi scarf. It looks so warm. Any other color? There we go. color. Maybe, maybe. I 
Yeah, give it kind of a holographic feel almost. Bunny! Okay, it's like, so I guess like shoulders start here. Be perfect with all the snow I'm getting. Yeah, snow bun, Arctic rabbit. Da, 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 da. So here we've got like. some of this bold blue. bunny. Well, bunnies are the closest thing there is in Animal Crossing to bats. So, so when I played New Horizons, I had an old bunny village. throwing me off. The shadow color that I'm using for the scar um, looks like skin, so I'll just do that. Should be fine. Give you a rounder face. fluffier. Okay, now we need a shadow under this since the colors are separated. Maybe a piece of cake.
Yeah, bunnies don't like being pet as much as cats or dogs. And they also don't like, they don't usually lay down either. So if you have a bunny that does lay down on all fours and like flops over on the side, um, that is a level of trust that is absolutely priceless. this around a little bit. Okay, let's see. What do we got here? Something looks a bit lopsided. Not sure, not sure what it is exactly. Um Moving this ear down a little bit. Oh, never mind. Let's go that way. So it's a bit far back. Uh, I think I see what you mean. I think it's because the torso looks like it's like facing the other way. Oh, thank you for your combo. Okay. Oh, thanks for being stretchy. Maybe I should flip the torso horizontally. Um, so that way the direction of the bunny scarf is kind of like agreeing more. Ah, oh, oh, good stretch. Hmm. Yeah, let me try that. I think. Wish I had made the hair on a separate layer. But whatever. Oops. I didn't put that too high up. have any pet it would be a chameleon nice
Okay. Going up this way. this look. Yeah, I think because of the direction of the scarf this way, it kind of looks more correct, even though it's not, like, accurate. It just feels better. Huh. So now I just need to figure out what is still bothering me with the eyes. here. There's more of the light yellow on the right eye. Oh, maybe. Let's do this. Just darken it here. Oh, I bet it's because the top of the eye should be darker, which in this case would involve the use of black. having the light right here. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's better. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Hot chee you. Something else. Maybe I could try. Maybe this eye is a little too far over. Mm. 
Yeah. Okay, that might work. That eye might be too far over also. Uh, should I bring it this way maybe? Or maybe this this I could go this way. Okay, yeah. Me gusta. Pretty nice. Maybe I could increase the contrast of uh, the shadow. Awesome. Yeah, I think this is good enough for our purposes. Awesome. So we have Picora and Anya portraits, and Anya has a sprite now. So all in all, pretty, pretty productive stream. No oh, talking about anime. Nice. All right. I am receiving a DM. <laughs> okay, I get you. <laughs> Alright, so I think for the rest of the stream we can watch that, that Gamma video that somebody mentioned before. So I am going to... Switch over to video mode. Uh, oh, where's my OBS? Okay, there we go. Nice. <laughs> and I don't need uh, my tablet stuff. Yay! Okay, so... Alright, I need to find my YouTube um, capture. So it's uh, 1920 by 1080. Then I will grab the URL address. This is a really interesting video on like the sort of like thought process that somebody goes through um, when making like a fan game, 3D fan game in particular. So I had a lot of free time back in 2020. Initially, I had set out to just tinker around with Unity and learn something new, and I ended up making the, a proof I of love concept that animation. You could tell he's an animator at heart. Reimagination just how Gamma's fluid the robots' movements are. Adventure, which was held together with a lot of spaghetti code and duct tape. So, you know, I just That's, thought I'd walk through a little, a little loud bit on my end. Hold on a second. How, how's it now, volume-wise?
<laughs> yes, they got hired this man. <laughs> I went for a more modernized approach to the aiming mechanics. Sounds fine. I didn't have to create any crazy complex locomotion nice. system with strafing and such, as Gamma's lower body will continue to move in the direction that That's you're running. That's such a cool While the upper body will just shortcut. rotate and look in the direction that you're aiming at. Like, like the it way that Gamma rotates his upper torso, it's just, it's just perfect for kind of like avoiding having to like rig it the way that you would rig a human model. There are some basic systems as well, like being able to take damage and lose rings being able to die, and being able to respawn using a checkpoint system. <laughs> Mission failed. Yeah, like this already Mission is, failed. this would be such, like a good foundation for someone to like continue off of. But I, I have no idea without looking at his code. AI that would just so, like, you and try to hit you. I so could imagine that like if you're just working on a fan game project on your own, um, like you don't really care about like the structure of your code in the sense of making it well, readable for other people. NPCs, I thought to compromise with some monitors and have a little bit of fun with it. This way to the egg carrier. Since there's no bolt, you'll just have to hover all the way there. <laughs> Sorry. Trinkle Park is closed today. The elevator looks broken. Speed Highway is closed today. This elevator looks broken too. One strange and intriguing thing I came across was when I unified Station Square into one whole map. Though some areas are missing. Oh, like it's cool that you did that. Casino. I realized it made the map feel way smaller because in the original game, the loading screens between areas somewhat implied and gave the illusion that it was a much larger city. Yeah, that's a good point, honestly. Like, the, the station square hub isn't really that big. But it's just that the loading screens imply that, like, the character travels, like, some distance before they reach the next area. Probably one of my favorite additions were the adventure field transitions. The original game displayed a 2D image of the location that you're traveling to, so instead, I thought to make it a slightly rotating 3D model diorama and use some unused audio from the original game. And I think it looks pretty cool. That's so cool! It'd be cool if somebody modded that into um, Sonic Adventure DX. This next one was actually the first one I worked on, and when I first got it up and running with the unused audio, it sent chills down my spine. That's so cool! I almost kind of imagined that the unused like music tracks were meant to be played during the loading transitions. This was the first actual completable level that I worked on, just with some very basic elements. Hello. Whoa, cool. <laughs> yep. Very, that, that's very game dev. Game dev placeholder text. Yeah, you, you, you know, like, hello world. Anyone who's taken a, a, a class on programming knows the legendary hello world statement. My friend Aki actually um, played Sonic Adventure DX on her stream, and like. So that's about it. As a whole, <laughs> I did have an idea for a taste. At one point, she got like a redeem from chat to play honestly, blindfolded for a few minutes. Down because it's she almost beat Gamma's first but level. I'm just not sure blindfolded. if I'll be able to go back to this anytime soon <laughs> because my focus and attention is just on a lot of other things nowadays. And yeah. There's only so much I can put into projects like this. I also thought of making it an animated series instead, which is actually where this video initially came from. Yeah, that's a really cool, cool video too. But in the end, I concluded that it would take way too much time for basically the reasons I just explained. Anyway, I know it's not a whole lot of progress considering I started this four years ago and the fact that I would work on this off and on in my spare moments, but it was still a fun experience to mess around with. Yeah, well, when I'm you're probably not going to release this, it would be <laughs> awesome to see a better version of a project like this made by the already extremely skilled Sonic fan game community. 
I'm sure that they would be able to do a much better job than I did in a much shorter amount of time. I so, feel like please, someone he could at least maybe something. release uh, like the, anyway, the model animations. And I'm actually also working on another Sonic related That would video be like a good starting a point, I think. connection that I haven't heard anyone talk about very much regarding Sonic Adventure and... Okay. I guess he's just talking about his next video here. So, yeah. Look forward to that, I guess. Bye. Bye. Okay. Yeah, like... Like, like he said, he took four years to make it, but you can't really gauge um, <clears throat> the amount of time that you spend working on a project based solely on like the linear flow of time. You should only count the days that you actually are are like actually working on it. Like in that context, I feel like Freedom Planet Two really didn't take like seven years in total because there were gaps in between where we just like were like kind of taking a break from everything. Um, and of course, like, you know, like when the pandemic started, that was also kind of a like a period where nothing was happening because there was such a shock to the system. Yeah, but yeah, this this looked like such this looked like such, such like, oh, it's so cool. Just like seeing like like even though like the maps haven't changed from like the original Sonic Adventure, like he used the exact same levels. Just still seeing like the fluid character animations just like like does so much and it makes me like wonder what like a maybe like a mod for like Sonic Adventure DX would look like that has like more fluid animations like that. Someone's actually working on something like that for Sonic Adventure 2. Um it's basically like a like a I think it's SA2 modernized or something. Where like they're they're just like redoing all the animations and stuff and the cutscenes. It looks it looks pretty cool so far. I wonder if there's a good video on that. Um what are some other cool videos that I have seen recently? I'm going to look through my history. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see. Bah, 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 bah. Oh, yeah, I've been listening to a lot of the Hat in Time soundtrack, too. Wonder how Project Row 6 is doing? Uh, they've finished the end of the world, from what I've heard, but they still have way more work to do, so it's probably not going to be out for a few years. But I'm so excited for that. Um, once they have last story and um, and boss fights in, there's pretty much no reason to like play the original 06 unless you like want to see like the cutscenes and stuff. Oh yeah, and I uploaded to YouTube my reaction to like the like the Penny's Big Breakaway interview. That was really good. I'm looking for stuff. Oh! <laughs> no hub worlds. Yeah, like, I feel like for the hub worlds, they'd have to, like, retool them pretty extensively. Um, for them to be, like, interesting enough. <laughs> oh, Argo, I'm just looking for videos to watch for the rest of the stream. Uh, Matt Poshy VT! Thank you so much for the follow, I appreciate it! Welcome, welcome! Uh, I should change my thing to just chatting. Hold on. Da, 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 da. I was watching a bunch of videos uh, also on how to... What? Fuck again! Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Argo, for the five gifted subbies. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, I didn't think I know what we can watch. Uh, if it's not too long. Let's see. It is a little on the long side. Mm. Yeah, I'll find something else to watch. Um... <laughs> oh yeah, Jet released a new video. I like his videos. They're amusing. What else we got? Oh, it's 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 kind of trippy looking through my watch history. Da, 
and like seeing like my own videos in there because like I, I i i tend to watch my own videos <laughs> once once they're once they're ready uh moth flurry thank you so much for the follow i appreciate it like watching my vids too oh i appreciate that What is this? Oh, I see. Nice. Oh, that's so cool. Sometimes I should like go through like anytime I see like a video that looks like interesting to watch with people, uh, I could um, I could add it to like the watch later playlist. And then maybe find a way to just like play them all in succession. I've seen some other VTubers do that. All right, let's see. I could, um, I wonder if Design Doc has anything new. I always like their videos. They have. They have a video on sleep mechanics that they just put out a day ago. They have one in backtracking too. Did I see the how to Mila video? Oh, oh I did not. Yeah, Sakurai videos are really good too. All right, let me check how to Mila. It's from a Blaze Emblem the year. Okay, this looks interesting. Okay, okay. I'm gonna copy the uh, URL address and then paste it in. Okay. I got that dog in me. <laughs> no, 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 no. See, I am that dog. Hi ho, it's me again. Wait, didn't he do that one review that we watched? And then he kind of like freaked out in a good way that we watched it. Because I've seen and heard some people are struggling with Mila's main tech of block dashes. So I thought I'd try to explain how this shit goes down in both games because I don't think I've explained it well enough. Well, not in my Freedom Planet 1 video, and I've yet to even get to that part where I talk about it in part 3 of <laughs> Freedom Planet 2. <laughs> if you're looking to figure out Mila, clean some things up, or see if what I have to say has any actual merit, you're in the right spot! I got you covered, Chief, and so does this war crime doggy. <laughs> yeah, she plays so different between both games. But I genuinely like the improvements that we made in the sequel. I think it's like way less precise. Um, cause like I've 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 definitely like learned a lot over the years about how to make it so that like the 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 abilities of your character don't like cause ha actual hand pain, especially in the context of people who like speed run the game. Cause I when I made Mila's move set in the Free Planet One, I did not have like speed running in mind, but it just turned out that the strats were absolutely insane to the point where she was a preferred, like, character to go as fast as possible over Lilac. But, like, I, I just feel like Mila and Carol in FP1 are, like, very okay, so undercooked. So I'm glad we had the opportunity to, like, make a sequel to fix that. She needs to take time in order to form the cube itself. Mind you, this cube needs around one and a half seconds. I could That's so much! You have to hold the special button in order to start the formation in the first place. And while you're doing this, you are committing to the formation. Because otherwise, you're doing something else like defending yourself or floating. You can form the cube while on the ground, moving, and while in the yeah, air. Yeah, that's so not even the worst part. The worst part is that, like, because the game is made in Clip King Fusion, occasionally th there will be, like, dropped inputs at random. And I think, like, when speedrunners found out that that was the reason why certain texts were not always working, uh, I think that's what killed FP1 speedrunning for the most part. 
actions, like attacking and floating, Mila and unfortunately, it's not something that we could have. It's just a matter of finding like, the proper flow fixed, really. cube formations and being able to shoot them off the right way. Now, that means whenever you want to try and go fast, you need to find a rhythm. Now, why do you want to find a rhythm with Mila? Because it's never nearly as simple as just forming, pointing, and shooting, since FP1 is a bit scrunked in places. Yeah, that's scrunkly. Sometimes, <laughs> stages do not like Mila, and the physics are not entirely the best. Even with your best intentions to go fast, sometimes the game will tell you a flat and clear no. Every time I think of Trap Hideout and Final Dreadnought 2, I want to stop playing the game. <sighs> Now, oh, that's a mood. Answer to being able to fling this Final Dreadnought 2 was a nightmare for everybody to speedrun for the longest time because of Dreadbox, but like, you, I've heard that they found a more consistent strat for doing that. All right, when you've got the cube, jump, and while jumping, and I'm talking as soon as you jump, hold down back and then shoot. And while shooting, move your hand back over to forward. Well, that doesn't sound so hard when you say <laughs> uh, Oh gosh, this looks painful. Like, my hands hurt just by looking at this combination. <laughs> see, see, the thing is, is that, like, because Mila's, like, flutter jump kind of lowers her gravity, uh, you get the most bang for your buck if you fire, like, the frame after you start jumping, because at that point you have, like, the highest, like, Y velocity that you're going to get before, like, gravity starts to do its thing. So that's also the reason why Lilac gets insane height if she does a dragon cyclone like immediately after hitting a spring. Because immediately after she hits this, a spring is when her like vertical velocity is the highest. And because cyclone lowers Lilac's gravity significantly, uh, you basically get like exponentially more height um, by doing that. One. Easier said than done, because doing this can vary from That's something that I specifically, like, toned down with Crony and Chrono Gear, because we didn't want to have people rely on, like, frame-perfect spring, spring jumps with the Crony Copter. Here's what I tell new players who are getting into the genre of fast-paced, air-dashing, animation canceling, shit spewing, you bitch, mean-ass, whack-ass, fast-ass anime fighters. Slow your roll. Take the inputs one step at a time. Take each bit of the sequence step by step, because once you get it down, it's all about being able to either chain them together or keep yourself flying with floats and block flights. And like more than half of the speed run, you're doing that exact input. That's like insane. I can't believe like there have been actual speedrunners at GDQ that have pulled that off, considering that the game is like, I don't know, like 40 minutes to speed run. So start small with trying to jump and shoot. You know you got it right when Mila just flies away. Oh, if hi Don. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Thank you for playing. By the end of your jump. If Mila shoots in a direction you weren't looking for, then you probably did it too fast and wild. I know that because it still happens to me from time to time. The main thing you need to get down is the jump. Because since Mila's block dash is based on some physics fuckery, she's going to get the most out of oh, her dashes that's if so she's fast. just starting up her jump. Then when you get that down, that's when you're going to get into the real me of it, which is keeping that momentum by moving your finger or thumb from down back to forward each blast. And then when you get it down, try chaining them like this. <sighs> that looks so cool. I wish, just wish it was easier to execute. Can't get it down in a Xbox. chain. Keep practicing. Don't kill your hands, please. After that, it's all a matter of finding the consistency and grinding the stages out and finding words best used and improving yourself. <sighs> Cause sometimes you just clonk yourself into enemies or the wall or the. Yeah, I'm not gonna be pretty neat. Kill your momentum. That's okay. Where like so you just put input like a simpler fighting game input and then she automatically like points it in the right direction and then launches herself. Work on, but now I can get it down mostly consistently. It's just wonky because Mila's flow is scrunked. Also, you can buffer a cube after you just shot one. So there's another thing to manage after blasting yourself into outer space. I can manage a whole another, another good quality of life change for this particular like iteration of Mila would have been for like auto charging for the cube. 
long periods of time. I'm used to considering what I play, but the same can't be said for anyone else. So if you're ever hurting yourself trying to do this shit consistently, try to take breaks whenever you can. Rise and grind. Yeah, please, don't please don't. In the midst of grinding. Don't. Please. Hurt yourself trying to speedrun this sprinkly character. Like, I already feel bad enough that, like, like, the optimal strategies required such, like, such a long period of super precise inputs. Um, so I am, I am very glad that we were able to kind of, like, mostly streamline that in Freedom Planet 2, but, like, yeah, if you're, if you're still speedrunning in the first game, just, like, like, please speedrun the second one instead. <laughs> yeah, or at least, like, do whatever you can to just, like, make it not, like, Hurt your hands. Now then, on to Freedom Planet 2. I honestly would not mind um, if somebody made like a trainer program for Freedom Planet 1 that automatically handled the inputs for you. I would not consider that cheating. Um, if it's, if it, because it's about your health, you know? Does your model have a cheek buff? Um, kind of. Yeah. I can also pog. <laughs> Back for another dose of punishment and regret, little puppy. Maybe if you beg and accept what you are, everything will go smoothly and you can see your mommy and daddy after... <sighs> you're not that scared puppy, you're... You're something different. <laughs> That's left is death. Oh, is this the same guy? Deuce. What happened to that feckless little defective mutt? Where is she? <laughs> Why have you taken He's a pretty good place? voice actor. What are you? Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. We're gonna plant two Mila. The biggest buff in gaming history for a character. Let's go! Joke about how so fast! So simple Mila is in this game, but I'll say like this. FP2 Mila requires more of a faster and consistent rhythm than FP1 Mila. Because of how much faster FP2 is compared to 1, Mila is not only smoother, but much more streamlined. So, Let's go! here's the rhythm you need to learn and mash into your bloodstream to really do Mila things. It all starts with a dodge, because dodging gives you the cube. Now, yeah. what you're gonna do is jump, Shoot behind, it doesn't matter now as long as it's behind. Dodge, repeat ad nauseum. If you can get the rhythm down, you can go nuts with the cube blast. Since it's not only your main means of getting speed and honestly showing how ignorant Mila is as a character, but it's also a good chunk of your damage. Bro, you would be yeah, so yeah. surprised to know how aggressive Mila is in this game. Like, she is a rabid dog. She just does not stop. I'm not even fucking playing. She just keeps going. What the f- <laughs> What is this character? Now, this Mila can absolutely break your hands if you're going at a pace similar to mine, if you're not used to doing shit like this. Yeah, like, seeing Freedom Planet 1 and Freedom Planet 2 footage back-to-back -back really, like, really, like, hammers home how much of an improvement, like, the graphics were. Guess this person likes Guilty Gear, huh? Uh, Is that Guilty Gear? Play other platformers that like to make your hands into finely wrapped pretzels with a wave dash included for good measure. Point is, Mila's entire game oh, is Blue. consistency. Uh, I, don't, I haven't played either fighting games, so I wouldn't know. In order to get good time. And if you know where to throw yourself, those are easy to get. Trust me. Sorry, sorry, Mila sorry, BuzzBlue fans. All eight directions. Nice. And that means that she's able to now feasibly fling herself wherever she wants. Now, if you throw all that I've told you together, along with floating... Remember when I said Amila was ignorant? Let me give you a few examples. Bosses like the Ball Bot in Dragon Valley, Corazon, Serpentine Snow, and Murder get washed by Mila. And even then, bosses that run around, you can just block dash to them and hunt them. If there's a stage with any means of verticality, Mila can fling herself up and ignore whatever gimmick the stage wants you to deal with, like most of Pro Papa do. Yep, you yep. can do what Mila does to Ancestral Forge and break it over your little fuzzy puppy kneecaps. 
Mila and Carol just basically ignore all the puzzles in Ancestral Forge. The first area puzzles and entirely skip the final puzzle outside of making this stream here like not hazardous. Clockwork Arboretum is a joke. It has so many ways to ignore a number of floors and speed on by them. Oh my Best gosh, yeah. Nails, I, got I, I cannot wait to see this game at GDQ again. I hope it happens. Mila is an actual war crime in this game. Considering <laughs> yeah. that her whole gimmick is infinitely better and more approachable. If you wanted to, you could do what I do. It's really not that hard outside of speeding through stages and consistently shooting. Mila dog walks this entire game if you're really looking to keep on grinding the game. You'd be surprised how much you'll see improvement. All it takes is blasting as soon as you jump and you're golden for a number of stages in the game. I'm not even fucking playing. So if you want a quick rundown, Freedom Planet nice. 1 Mila is jank, requires learning, and can be really rewarding. Freedom nice. Planet 2 is a smoother and more busted character, but asks for consistency and APM. No matter what you do, as long as you do a block shot as soon as you jump, you're guaranteed to just send yourself to space. Have fun being Mila dorks! Hope this helps yeah. people wanting to be the best dog. You can do it. Have some faith in you, like the dog you play. She's come a long way since her first rodeo, and I'd imagine you'll come just as far as her. Get out there, run laps, blast blocks, punch snakes, tyrant rave dragons, and be happy about your runs. Even if they're worse than the last one, you did good enough to finish and get your result. Nice. I like that. That was a good video. <clears throat> well, I'm gonna hop over the chat. Um, for the rest of the stream. Well. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, yeah, that was a good video. I like that. Thank you for suggesting it, Mike. It just kind of like makes me think about like again how grateful I am that we were, had the opportunity to like release the sequel and just like make a sequel in general that could really take like the 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 nuggets of like genuinely good things in Carol and Mila's move sets and like really flesh them out into something that just like flows so much better. And like, yeah, again, I, I, I do hope someday that we, uh, one of our speedrunners gets into GDQ again. It would be really cool to see, especially with the console versions coming out um, in like one and a half, two weeks. <laughs> I think they cover new interest in it. But like, we do have a few more updates planned for the PC version afterwards. But like, unfortunately, they're unlikely to come to, to consoles. But... I think for the PC version, it, it would be mostly like bug fixes and very minor tweaks anyway. Um, but hopefully, like 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 most of what we need will be in, in in the console version. So like for the casual player, you won't really tell the difference between either version. But like our publishers at Xseed have done a phenomenal job um, with the console versions of the game, and I genuinely cannot wait to be able to play this game on my Nintendo Switch. Oh, it's gonna be so good. I hope we get, um, I hope we get, like, like, keys for, like, for, for, like, the console versions that we can pass around to, like, friends and to, like, like, members of the press and all that and to, and to, like, team members. Like, uh, if, if I get, like, a set of keys, uh, a set of codes, um, like, the team gets priority, but then if I have any left over, it might be fun to do a giveaway, uh, on the, on the channel sometime. Looking forward to double dipping. Uh, thank you. Thank you, House Sword. Oh, I'm so excited. So excited, but also very nervous. But I, 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 I do hope everything goes well. It's, I think it will. <clears throat> I was also, um, like I'm coordinating with, um, with Axeed on a few other things. Like there's a Japanese magazine that wants to interview me about it. So like over the next few days, I'm going to like type answers to the questions and then Axeed will translate for, for me. <clears throat> so that's going to be pretty cool. And I'm just, I've just, they've just been shooting me emails every now and then about like double checking to make sure that um, certain like assets are approved um, in terms of how they look and everything. Uh, and they sent me the trailer recently, the launch trailer for the game, which is different than ours. Um, I do feel like ours is like it flows a bit more nicely because we have actual experienced players um, that recorded footage for us. But but you know, like theirs get their their footage gets the point across. 
But she's going to scrutinize the translation. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I do. <clears throat> I really hope that there's no discrepancies uh, between Freedom Planet 1 and Freedom Planet 2 in terms of like certain terminologies that they chose to rename. Mm. So, so I, I really hope like there, there's there's nothing I can do but hope because I don't know any other languages um, to to such an extent that I would be able to double check that sort of thing. Is a magazine something that has an online published version too? I hope so. It's pretty normal. It's a pretty notable magazine from what I've heard. So I'll just have to do my best to kind of like um, provide uh, satisfactory responses. Yeah, they the, the they do seem to be playing up like the sonic similarities, but you know there are other inspirations. But like I guess I I don't mind Sonic being the pull that brings people in, and then once they start playing the game, they're like they'll they'll be able to appreciate how how different it is. Is it Famitsu? No, 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 no. Um, I'm not sure if I can say what it is. Yeah, but uh, it's not Famitsu. Uh, German Xbox YouTube channel just uploaded a video featuring games for April, and they feature Free and Planet 2 in the video. Let's go! Yeah, I've seen people, um, uh, people, like, see, like, Free and Planet 2, like, in the wild when they're checking, like, upcoming releases. Um, I bet if I checked the Nintendo Switch eShop, it would be up there, too. I'm so happy. <laughs> I think you've had pets as well. Oh my gosh. So, I think I'm gonna call for today. It is time to feed my puppos and myself. Mm. The Nintendo Switch trailer somehow... Oh, it's up to 100k views now? Let's go! That's so awesome! Alright, let's see. Who can we raid? Let's see. Yomi's playing Supermarket Simulator. Ah, uh, Sirobi's just chatting. Um, Dusky is playing her friend's new game. Kemia's playing Freedom Planet 2. Let's go! Okay, let's raid, raid Kemia. Kemia Mistwalker. What a coincidence. <laughs> thank you so much for, sh for stream. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us, Alex. And thank you, everybody, for just, like, hanging with me. As we do some art stuff and... And, and do some, some watching of cool videos. Ah. Uh. Yeah, okay, so next week, uh, I will be taking Thursday off once again because I do have to do, like, some, some, like, final tax stuff. Uh, so I, we're looking at, like, another, um, week where I have two streams. Uh, I'm thinking on Tuesday, uh, I could, uh, continue my, uh, Hat in Time playthrough. And then maybe on Friday we do another dev stream. We'll see. We'll see where the wind takes us. I'll have, I'll have a schedule up by Monday. But in the meantime, I hope everybody has the best of weekends. Uh, stay care take care of yourselves. Stay warm if you're in a cold climate. Stay cool if you're in a warm climate. And yeah, yeah, I'll see you next week. Thank you all so much for hanging with me. And uh, here is a raid message that we can pass along uh, to Kemia. Uh, uh, oh, chat scrolling. I need to copy paste this. <coughs> yeah. Here we go. Happy Friday. Thank you, everybody. That's a wrap. Bye.